Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animate Orange, and welcome to another Iconics review video. Today we are going to talk about one of the Game of Thrones model. We have the Iron Throne that I very recently put together. Now, this is a rather detailed and layered model, fairly decent size for an Iconics model. You know, Iconics models usually are bigger and more detailed. I find it interesting that they've only released the Game of Thrones models as Iconics models. While this is a decent size, we've certainly seen some much larger Iconics models. So, I feel like maybe it should be a little bigger, but at the same time, it's not a bad size. I, mean, I guess if it was a Metal Earth model, it'd probably re be ridiculously tino, tiny and not have as much detail as this has. And as you can see, there are so many little pieces of swords involved in this thing. Now, if you haven't already picked up on it, I'll have to admit I've not read or seen any of the Game of Thrones books or movies or any of that. I want to. I want to. Somewhere in the past, I don't know, five or ten years, I really got away from watching much TV. Nothing to say, not saying anything bad about TV, not meaning to insult anybody. I watched a ton of TV when I was much younger, and I've just kind of gotten to where there's other things I'd rather be doing. So it's kind of difficult for me to sit down and actually spend a lot of time watching TV because I keep myself busy with other things. But I do plan on eventually getting the books, especially books on audio if I can. I can listen to this stories, these stories while I'm building models. But that hasn't happened yet, so forgive me if I don't know some of the details behind this throne, but I certainly am familiar with it because you can't see much of anything about Game of Thrones or know anybody who likes Game of Thrones without seeing something about this throne of swords. But anyway, to talk about the model, it is a lot of large pieces. So initially it looks like, hey, maybe this will come together fairly quickly. And to get started, it almost seems like it will. You start layering a few pieces together for the back side and you're following directions, folding things a certain way. And then you put these kind of stands on underneath here, which are very plain. The instructions make it look like these three pieces underneath here, the sides fold at 90 degrees when they actually fan out a little bit, as you can kind of see there. And that was a little bit of a misunderstanding in the instructions, but it's not a big deal. It's nothing to just fan those back out and put them in place. But where I really ran into trouble is these pieces of the swords that lay over top. And you start with this piece right here. And the way the instructions, the way I interpreted the instructions, is you hold the engraved side facing, facing yourself, and the arrow kind of makes it the way it's positioned makes it it says you should put a curve in it but it makes it look like you should curve backwards so that if the details of the model are facing you the edges curve away and i did that but nothing seemed to line up or fit and i was a little confused trying to get some of these edge tabs to connect to the center but they don't line up and it doesn't work that way and i was originally thinking that this piece here may be connected on one side of the middle and laid over just that side and the next piece connected and laid over. And it took me a while and quite a bit of confusion to understand that's not what happened. Then I began to think, well, maybe I'm supposed to curve this piece all the way around and connect it to itself. Because if you take this piece and curve it more or less in a cylinder, the tabs on one edge do kind of line up with the slots on the other. I mean, I managed to make it happen. And there's tabs in the middle. I thought once you did that, then it fits in the middle and somehow that's how it's supposed to work. That didn't work either. It came close, but it didn't work. And if you watch the build video, you'll notice that the table I'm using up to that point is one style of table, not my usual, because I was using the local library at the time. But after that point, once I figured it out, the table changes because I'm at home at this point. I took a break from it, as I find I sometimes have to do to clear my head and realize that one of two things is occurring here. Either I'm misinterpreting the instructions and folding that piece incorrectly or curving it incorrectly, or they've written the instructions incorrectly. It's hard to say which way it goes. Could easily be an interpretation issue, which is an issue that has popped up before. <coughs> anyway, 
Once I sat back down and gave it another shot, I realized that this piece does not curve so that the edges of the detail fall away from you, but the edges, if you're holding the piece so that the detail is facing you, the edges fold towards you and create that dip. Once I folded it that way, those center tabs did line up with a little bit of effort. And then the next piece, once I folded it that way, connected to the edge here, the center pieces did fit where they were supposed to fit and things then began to come together. But that put quite a hiccup in my plans of putting this model together. I was really hoping to sit down within an hour and a half, put this model together, have some time to set up and break down at the library and I could go home and edit my video. It's not what happened. It put me out for a whole another week and a half, two weeks. Anyway, whatever. That's the first thing you're going to want to look out for when you're building this model is these pieces that go on the back. They fold so that the detail is facing out and the center sinks in so they'll fit in this spot, not the other way. It's going to trip you up severely if you get that wrong. Once you get past that point, pretty much everything falls into place. There's a little bit of a struggle getting some of the edge tabs together and manipulating things because things warp easily the way these parts are with all the thin thinness of it and jagged edges, but it's doable. The side pieces come together fairly logical. You're putting unusual curves in things because not everything is flat. But again, most of this stuff connects and folds together fairly logical and fairly easily. The next time that I ran into any trouble, when you're putting on these side pieces, I found one of two strategies is most useful. Either start at one end, get those tabs lined up, and connected and secured, and then line up the other end. Or if there's a middle tab, or an inner tab, start with that one because it's going to be hard to reach in and adjust that one if you've got the others in place. But if you start with this inside tab and then do the outsides, you have some room to adjust and get to them because you're going to have likely have situations where a tab is bent too far one way or the other and need some adjustment. That strategy worked fairly well for me for getting these side pieces on and this front to detailed piece on, although there was a little bit of a struggle with the top here. Not a big deal. That's normal for these models. Where I really ran into my next big struggle is once we're almost done, I'm on the last step, and I go to put these back pieces on to the front. And these ed edge pieces were just an absolute pain. I think somewhere along the directions, I interpreted how to fold these top sword parts incorrectly. I folded one side right and one side the wrong way. They were intermingling and making it more difficult to line things up, so I had to fan things out away from each other to allow me the freedom to move things back and forth. But getting the three tabs on the side into their position was quite a challenge. And there's a fourth tab in here on the side that I really didn't know what to do with. And I just said, whatever, I'm going to ignore that tab. There's enough here to hold it on. But there's a inner side piece that goes on that has a tab that I'm really not sure where it's supposed to go. So I just kind of let it be. Once I got the tabs on, the three tabs on one edge, I focused on the three on the other, which was a lot of forcing things to line up. One of the tabs on this side came back up out of place, and I never really got it satisfactory back into place. It's kind of warped and crammed in there and sort of holding together, but eh. And then it became a struggle. There's several tabs up here that fold over the back edge of all of these fins, but there's one lower down in the middle that has to go in its place, and it was quite a struggle to get that in its spot too. So very true to form when it comes to putting larger assemblies together with Metal Earth models, that's where you run into a lot of alignment issues, and this was no exception, but I managed for the most part to overcome it, and as you can see, the model is finished. I spent a fair amount of time realigning things and trying to put the appropriate curves and twists back into things and spent some time trying to reshape the handles on the back here because they got pretty warped and out of place doing the best that I could to try and make this look like it should when I don't completely know how it should look but anyway the end result is a fantastic model lots of layered detail especially in the back here there's so many layers on top of layers this part is pretty thick and pretty hefty the bottom is layered, but not as much. That's not to say anything bad about it. The back is very interesting the way it's done. Once you understand it, it's very, very cool the way it comes together. It is a wonderful looking model with a lot of detail, and I've certainly heard a lot of other people 
complement it on the level of detail, which is what the Iconics models are known for. So for that, Metal Earth, well done, wonderful looking model. A bit more challenging than I expected, but not terribly so. Take a deep breath and bring with you lots of patience and you can get this model easily put together as well, especially with a few tips that I've shared to keep you from making the mistakes that I made. I make these mistakes so that you don't have to. It's probably an excellent model to start with, with these Game of Thrones models. It's the one that I decided to start with, but as I build more, I'll update you on whether or not I still feel the same way. But this is an excellent model. This one was sent to me by Metal Earth for me to build and review. I should probably add that detail in there as well. But I'm going to give you my honest review. Thank you very much Metal Earth for sending me sending this model to build. It was a lot of fun. It was a little bit of a hair pulling challenge, but I managed through it. I think that one bit of the instructions could probably use some clarifying so that more people don't run into the same problem I did. But beyond that, if you are familiar with this throne and with the mo with the television show and the books, maybe that won't be as much of a challenge for you. You could look at that and go, oh yeah, that's not how that's supposed to go. But me not being that familiar with it possibly caused me a little more issue. I like to ask myself the one question at the end of these builds, going back, looking at it, is there anything I would have done differently? And I usually ask that question because sometimes I take an approach that doesn't work out as well as I would have thought it would. And I really can't argue with any of the way I approached any of this build. I think I did pretty well. The one thing I would go back and change is my understanding of how these come together. And that's just a misunderstanding of the directions, possibly coupled with a lack of familiar, familiarity with the model. But if I could go back and do this again, I would go back with the knowledge of how these go properly, probably finish this model in a little less time, maybe an hour and a half compared to two hours, which is what it took to put this together, having to correct the mistake that I made. I understand that other people have been a bit confused about it as well, but I don't know that anybody else has had the trouble that I have. But I'll leave it at that. It is an excellent model. Thank you very much, Metal Earth, for sending me this model to build and review. I also have a dragon coming up very soon and several other requested models from viewers that I need to address. This is my first build after moving into my new house, so my studio is mostly put together. I don't have all my models set back up yet. I do have a plan of making a video about moving and packing models. I've got all the footage for packing, but nothing for unpacking, so I hesitate to make that video until I know the end results of how my packing was. Everything is still sitting in boxes waiting for me to unpack it, and that's probably a little ways down the road. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for your support, and thank you to Metal Earth for your support. As always, thank you, and keep on keeping on.